What's going on YouTube? Clayky's all back again with another COTC video. Octopath Traveler we're talking about today. And we're going to be going over the eight five-star units you guys could possibly pull while you're re-rolling or maybe after you get into the game a little bit on launch for Octopath Traveler COTC. Now, this list right here, it's my first time ever using TierMaker.com. Somebody had this list, so thank you so much for already having all the little images of the sprites made. Uh, and if you guys, you know, the keen-eyed people can see, there will be a near Automata uh, collaboration. At least there was in JP, and apparently A2 is really good. So if you like A2, it's going to be the unit for you. But anyway, we're going to go over the eight units you guys can pull. I'll give you guys my opinions, and through my research, looking at up other tier lists, looking at the character data, etc., and show you guys exactly what these units can do, and then why I think they're really good or why I think they're not that good. First up on this tier list, we're going to be talking about Scarecrow. And if you guys didn't know, Scarecrow is probably my most beloved character out of these eight units. Not because Scarecrow is extremely good. He is really good at damage, but I just like his design. It's pretty simple. And he's like a bow user and his name is Scarecrow. I don't know why, but all of that stuff like draws me to the character. Now, if you guys haven't watched my reroll guide, uh, I'll have that linked at the end of the video. But it, it, you could see that I didn't really mention Scarecrow too much in that video. I mentioned two other units on this list. However, for me, personally, I would love to get a hold of a Scarecrow because I uh, just really like his design. But over that, let's talk about the actual meta analysis. When I talk about these units, it's really important that I discuss if they're really strong at 4.5 star or do they need that 5 star to unlock their other abilities to make them powerful. And Scarecrow is a prime example of someone that needs his 5 star to get really powerful. He's obviously a bow attacker and he's all about damage. He doesn't really bring a lot of support to the team, so he's going to have to be able to output that damage. And without his 5 star form, he doesn't really, uh, you know, excel past some of the four star bow users out there so you really need his five star for his four hit bow abilities but once you get that and once you get him built up he can actually really pump out the damage and some people really like that so i'm going to be putting scarecrow in b tier strictly because again he only brings physical damage brings a lot of it but you have to have his five star to take full advantage of him and his uh let's say his longevity kind of falls off because there are other bow users that end up being really good down the line too so he's going into b tier Next up, we're talking about the Dark Sword user, Fior. She's going to have Dark Sword damage, and she's going to be very good at that. She actually has a, her own self-attack buff and defense up that she just applies when she comes into battle, which is really powerful when we talk about the Octopath Traveler combat system. Um, and she is very good at 4.5 stars. She has a ton of sword damage. She actually has a three-hit sword single target hit, uh, which is very, very good as well. And then she also has like a better buff she can put on herself by, I think, 5%. So she gets her attack and defense up by 5%, more than her just self applying when you come into battle if you don't have another buffer out there uh like lynette which we're going to talk about later however fior somewhat like scarecrow needs her five star to shine once you unlock her five star she does get a giant nuke of a damage it's a single target one hit sword attack that lowers defense by 20 percent and hits for a big multiplier so that's going to be really when she starts to shine however unlike scarecrow Fiora is really powerful in her 4.5 star form. Like Scarecrow without his 5 star really is going to be much like a 4 star bow user. There might even be a 4 star bow user out there you like more. But as a warrior, Fiora is going to go into the A tier because she is still extremely strong in the beginning of the game. If you get her 5 star, she holds on to her longevity uh, throughout the meta. And uh, she just does a lot of damage. She's really cool. So she's going to be up a leg up on Scarecrow due to that, where her 4.5 star does have a lot of use. So I think this next unit that I'm going to talk about might get me in trouble with a lot of people out there when they talk about meta. But these are just my opinions on her. It's going to be Sophia. And Sophia is going to be an ice magic user. So that's like going to be one of the first and only magic users we have here besides like the side magic. She's like really all about damage as a scholar. Um, she is going to be ice damage meta like that's what she's going to be so she, she can really output the damage uh at the 4.5 star range she doesn't really need her five star to super pop off like it's good obviously you know upgrading a 4.5 to five star is great uh but she doesn't absolutely need that to be as strong as she wants to be however the caveat to that is if the enemy is not weak to ice her damage isn't as good so she's going to be very niche in that respect and then another reason why i don't like her too much is the fact that she kind of there are other scholars that come out that kind of like put her to shame and other damage dealers so i'm not saying that she's not useful because she will be she can have some she has some support abilities with the defense ice defense down she can support other ones she has a really cool ability that if you have her at hp 100 percent she has a 50 percent self-reduced sp cost so if you can keep her alive and keep her like healthy with a healer and keep her at 100 percent she can actually keep pumping out the abilities which is really cool However, again, if the the, the enemy isn't uh, weak to ice, she's not going to be that great. If it's weak to ice, she's amazing, 
So I'm actually going to slot her in the seats here. Now, I don't know how much trouble I'm going to get in for that because you guys are going to get in the beginning of the game, probably start using her, seeing her be like, start wrecking stuff. But that's where I'm going to put her for her longevity, her specific need to have ice, you know, uh, weakness on the enemy. And then her SP is awesome, her 50% SP reduction, but have to have her at 100 HP to have that happen. So that's where she's going to go for now. Gilderoy is our only five-star merchant in the game, so he's going to be our five-star tank if you guys want to get a hold of him, and he is a very good tank unit. Has the ability to AoE taunt, can buff up his own defense and magic defense, can even apply paralysis, does some lightning damage. Very, very good unit in himself, and even his 4.5-star form is very, very strong. His five-star form does bring like a counter that he can put on himself so he can counter physical attacks. He also gets a little bit of a heal with the damage dealing ability, but his 4.5-star is more than enough to get the job done as a tank so as a tank very very tanky very very good however you'll learn as you play that at the beginning of the game when you're not really set up to do a lot of damage you know tanks are going to be you know really really great right because they can take the damage you can get through kill the bosses slowly but as you progress the tanks meta kind of falls off and you just want more damage dealers or support healers support units to buff up right to be able to break the enemy as fast as possible shield pierce get through those shields and kill the enemy so that's the problem with gilderoy at the beginning of the game you guys are going to love them and i'm sure you'll love tanks throughout the game but as far as like how strong they are or how much usefulness they are down the line gilderoy is going to go above scarecrow let's see if i can mix that up at b tier because the unit itself is amazing you don't need the five star version to be good however again meta use throughout he'll fall off and you'll eventually probably want to replace him with a support unit healer or damage dealer to optimize your battles Next up, our first five-star healer we have is going to be Teo. Teo is going to be an apothecary and probably your best option when it comes to five-star healers. Uh, he has an AoE regen that he applies to the front row, which is going to be very important in Octopath Traveler COTC because we don't have items, right? We don't have like healing potions or anything like that. Healing is going to be at a premium and you want your healers to be able to apply the regen and then do other stuff to help you get through the shields, buff, immunity resist, stuff like that, and Teo brings that with his AoE regen, and that's at 4.5 stars. Teo is an extremely good unit at 4.5 stars, but becomes even better at 5 stars, so kind of similar to someone like Fior uh, or Gilderoy, very good at 4.5, but obviously the 5 star is going to bring you a little extra. At 5 star, he does get a regen he applies to a single ally and removes certain status elements. So he's going to get like a uh, a status element removal with regen he can apply and a big hitting axe ability that he gets at 5 star, which again, is good. You want all your units to be able to do some damage, to be able to hit for weaknesses. Uh, but other than that, he is going to be the go-to unit when it comes to healing at the beginning of the game. So I'm putting him up here in the A tier strictly because at the beginning of the game, you're going to want this aoe healing you're going to want this aoe regen uh as opposed to just somebody who just heals which we'll talk about in a minute with another unit here in the five star uh version and he has the ability to do some status helmets remove some status helmets and grant immunity to status helmets which will be important in the game so he's going in the a tier for now he may move up or down as we move out throughout the game but i think you guys will be very happy if you ended up pulling to you the next unit we're going to be ranking is Lynette. She's a dancer buffer class, and she is possibly one of the best units, if not the best units. She only has one person that rivals her in the game when you guys can pull at the beginning. She does very good buffing, uh, and she doesn't need her 5-star to shine at all. 4.5-star is good enough. She does a nice attack and magic up 15%. For two to five turns at the beginning of the fight and then as she switches out right so if you switch her from the front row to the back row and you guys will learn that you have to do that to gain sp back hp back you might want to use different people in different scenarios and then swap back in lynette as she swaps in and out she actually does buff up the team um by 10 percent magic defense as she you know goes in and out of the fight which is kind of crazy to me that she keeps applying the buff as you switch her in and out which is cool um her five star version is going to give her a fire aoe that puts fire defense down for two turns and then also has a magic defense down so she kind of gets some breaking capabilities if you don't have a really good breaker but she doesn't really need that the reason she's so good in longevity is eventually they will introduce some kind of ultimate limber break skill i don't know what they're going to call it in the global version and lynette's is really really good okay and then also lynette if you get her skill up uh you know if you max out her skills with her dupe system or whatever she becomes even more powerful so she is a unit that has long-term lo lo longevity if i could say the word right and she's really good at the beginning of the game so she's just a great unit phenomenal you definitely want to be pulling her she's put it going into s tier and as you guys see i'll put another unit in s tier here you will see i think the gap between s tier and a tier is massive for the units and how good they're going to be down the line and how good they are at the start of the game so make sure you understand that if you pull a net 
phenomenal unit. Next up, we're talking about our other five star healer you guys can get your hands on. This is going to be a cleric as opposed to Teo, which was an apothecary. We're talking about Millard, and the only difference, the major difference in my opinion, and it's pretty big in this game between Millard and Teo, is that Millard does not have the regen. And again, the reason the regen is so good is because it allows, it frees up the healer to constantly be doing other stuff instead of having to heal every turn. So Miller's healing is very, very good. Don't be too upset if you pull him, but that's going to be the major difference. And the downfall is if you have to heal every turn, his turns are healing, period. Like he's got to be spending that SP on healing. He has very good healing. He has a uh, buff that he can put on a single ally for defense and magic defense, which is great. His 4.5 star is more than enough. His 5 star brings another heal into the account that's more powerful, AoE heal, and it brings in a light AoE move. But you don't really absolutely need that, right? Uh, it's just not necessary. So he's very good at 4.5 star, which is why he's going to be rated pretty high here. Um, but, and he has light damage, right? It's not going to be anything that you go crazy over. He's not like, you know, busting the bank open or anything, but... He is very good in the fact that he can provide that light damage for light weakness or breaking, etc. And he's going to bring that healing in, and he's really good at 4.5. So I'm going to put him at the top of B tier. He's going to be under Teo by quite a bit. Let's see if I can actually move him over there. Uh, but don't be upset if you get him, because he's going to be the healer, and you guys need a healer in this game, and he could be pretty good at that. And last but not least, we have Viola, which is probably the best unit in the game starting out. Very, very strong thief-type unit. Fire dagger damage, and is really, really great at breaking uh, and shield eating, like, like de deleting the shield off the enemy uh, so you can do as much damage as possible. She has a passive that anybody in her row, so herself or the person in her row, have their debuffs uh, extended by one turn, which is going to be fantastic. She's extremely good at 4.5 star. No worries about that. Her 5 star gives her a dagger single target hit that restores SP, which is great, right? Because, you know, the more SP means the more abilities we can cast. And then she has another dagger ability that hits twice that reduces shield points, which is going to be phenomenal, right? So she's very, very good at 4.5 star, and she's even better at 5 star, right? Like, it, 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 it's, it's insane how good she is at 4.5 star, and then the 5 star just gets even better. Um, she does do fire damage, which is going to be great. And like I said, she's going to be the breaker. She's going to break uh, attack and magic by 20%. She can break defense. She can break magic defense down. She has all. She is. She is the breaker in the game. And you know, if you played any RPGs, breaking the enemy, making them do less, percentage based attack damage, and taking more percentage based magic and attack is going to be phenomenal. We're going to put her in the S tier, and there's without a doubt she goes up here, and that's where she's going to shine. So this is going to be my tier list, guys. And hopefully you understand why these characters are ranked where they are. Again, you guys can disagree with me. I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys think one unit should be in you know somewhere else than where they are in this tier list. You know how you would switch it up. I hope you guys have a ton of fun i am going to be streaming the game tonight i hope if it comes out when i think it is which i think is 10 or 11 p.m pacific standard time no that's eastern standard time pacific would be 8 p.m uh that's gonna be up to you guys if you guys want to check out that stream i'm just gonna be re-rolling and again if you guys haven't watched my re-roll guide check it out i would love to get these two s tier units and then a scarecrow because i just want to work on scarecrow and make them good uh but maybe i won't end up doing that but hopefully you guys are really excited about the game you can pre-download it now and again like i said it should be going live tonight i think it said two uh two o'clock utc which again if i convert it i think it's 8 p.m pacific but I could be getting that wrong. Comment down below if I got that wrong. I'd like to know so I can make sure I can be on stream for it. Happy rerolling, guys. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video. So if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you guys would change this around at all. For any of the units you don't care, you like the way they look. Subscribe for future Octopath Traveler COTC content. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.